Okay, gang. Now that we've talked about the mechanism behind a Robinson annulation, you know, you're not always going to have time to draw up the full mechanism. It's great to know it, but sometimes you need something a little bit faster, okay? And I think I've found a pretty decent way of explaining how to take your enone and your dicarbonyl and predict your Robinson product, and also how to take a Robinson product and break it up into an enone and a dicarbonyl precursor. So just stick with me. I don't think this video is going to be all that long. I think once we kind of get the hang of how to do this, you'll be great at it. Plus, I have tons of problems for you on the worksheet about this. Okay, so let's go back to that stock Robinson annulation I drew the mechanism with for you guys. Okay, so remember, this was our enone, obviously, and here's our dicarbonyl. Here's how I've learned to kind of do a Robinson annulation. I'm just going to or at least how to predict the product. I'm going to not write the reagents. So remember, the first step, and here's how the mechanism, knowing it, can help you predict the products quickly. Remember, this is the alpha carbon we make our enolate with. And in the first step, we attack this carbon right here in a Michael addition. So I usually, I use a different color, but I, in my head, or on my paper, I draw a dotted line right there. I'm going to make a connection right here. Remember, after the Michael addition is all said and done, we make our enolate this way, the opposite way, after the Michael addition, because remember, we're going to we attack with this car alpha carbon right here to this carbonyl because this can form a one, two, three, four, five, six membered ring. So then I usually locate that carbon and I draw a dotted line to the other carbonyl carbon in the dicarbonyl. And then, once you've done that, right, because an annulation is a word that means form a ring, so I usually draw at least the skeleton of what I formed. So, we started out with a six-membered ring right here. But you can see that we've also formed a one, two, three, four, five, six-membered ring. And I just numbered completely arbitrarily. Didn't, no rhyme or reason. So you can see... But these two carbons right here, carbons one and two, is part, are part of another six-membered ring. So I'm going to draw that over here. Okay. Now comes the part where you fill in groups. Okay, remember, we never, after the Michael addition, this guy is untouched, that carbonyl. So I'm going to draw him in. Okay? So, remember, we then have, so remember, the two relationships, here's where, here's where relationships come in. We did a Michael addition. We should have a 1,5 dicarbonyl. So locate that one carbon that is only used, carbonyl that's used in a Michael addition. Count five carbons away. One, two, three, four, five. There's your, there should be your other carbonyl that results from the Michael addition. And remember, it doesn't matter if you count this way or one, two, three, four, five. You'll end up in the same place. Okay. So remember that. This carbonyl is this carbonyl. And remember, you do an aldol condensation in a basic environment after the Michael addition. So you should form an enone. And the t part of the double bond, the end of the double bond, that fourth carbon, should be the carb in the position where you attacked that carbonyl, which should be one, two, three positions away from the carbonyl that only participates in the Michael addition reaction. Okay, so let me kind of, and then you need to fill in your other groups everywhere else. So you can see there's nothing on this ring, and there was only four carbons that started out in the enone, right? One, two, three, four. So let me kind of rehash that. You need to find the alpha carbon in the dicarbonyl that attacks the fourth carbon in the enone. Right, then you connect those two, right? There's your asterisk, there's your dot. You then need to fill in the other carbonyl in the Michael addition that's a part of the 1,5 dicarbonyl. So count five away from that carbon, and there's your Michael addition evidence. Then from that second carbon that was a part of the enone, you have to form another enone, which resulted from a condensation of this carbonyl, and this double bond you formed should should kind of begin one, two, three positions away from that carbon right there. Okay? That's how I usually go about it. 
Let's do another problem to kind of hammer that home. Okay, so let me look at my cheat sheet. We'll add some kind of substituents onto it. I'll put an ethyl group up top, ET, and I'm gonna put a methyl group down here, and we'll use the same dicarbonyl. Okay, so remember, we start out with a six-membered ring, we're going to make a six-membered ring, and before we actually draw that skeleton, let's prove that. So remember, we're going to make the dicarbonyl where that alpha carbon kind of doubles up between the two. Then, remember, he is going to be the carbon at the tip of the enolate that's going to attack in the Michael addition fashion to the fourth carbon in the enone. Right there, okay? Then remember, after we do that, we're going to form an enolate going this way to form a six-membered ring when we attack this carbonyl carbon, right? Because one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm gonna draw a line between these two guys. So we can prove now, since we're making these connections, one, two, three, four, five, six. So if you stick with me, we should be able to draw, this is the cyclohexane ring that's gonna come from this part of the reaction, and we started out with a six-membered cyclohexane ring. Okay, we didn't touch this carbonyl beyond the Michael addition. He gets to stay. Now remember, oh, I'm also gonna dot this carbon, right, because that, that was the original alpha carbon. He's the asterisk. So remember, five carbons away from this carbonyl should be this carbonyl. One, two, three, four, five. Awesome. And to the right of him is this dotted alpha carbon right there. So remember, we should, since we attacked him and we did a condensation, there should be an enone in this network of one, two, three, four atoms. And remember, the start of this double bond should be where this carbonyl was, and that should be one, two, three positions away from that alpha or from this carbonyl we kept. One, two, three. It all checks out. Now, let's fill in the groups, because there's some extra groups going on. On our asterisk carbon, we have an ethyl group. And on the dot alpha carbon from the enone, we have a methyl group. Okay, so hopefully that made sense. We have two more problems. Let me erase this. We'll, hand, we'll ha uh, hammer these home, and then you guys can do the full worksheet, and this actually closes the book on alpha carbons. I think I'm going to add one more video that's going to kind of be like a synthesis strategy video, but as far as new material, this is it. Okay, gang. So you can see that I've been kind of giving you the pieces nicely. Well, unfortunately, in this organic, cold organic world we live in, not everybody's nice. So what if someone gave you something along, whoops, not like that. It'd be crazy to give you something kind of looking like that. What if they gave you something along these lines? Let me use my cheat sheet again. That along with right. Unfortunately, not the way we're used to seeing Robinson pieces when they're before we put them together. But don't be scared. Remember. We need an enone and a 1,3 dicarbonyl. You can see 1, 2, 3, 4, we do in fact have an enone. And we're going to draw it the way we're used to seeing it. Also, you can see we have a 1, 2, 3, 1, 3 dicarbonyl. So let me actually draw this the way we're used to seeing it. Remember, we're used, the one we've seen thus far has been this cyclohexane ring like this. Let's kind of draw it like that, even though this isn't a ring. I'll draw this, right? Here were these three carbons right here, one, two, three, with just methyl groups going off on the sides. All right, that looks familiar, right? And at the same time, remember, we're used to seeing this. Whoops, not like, exactly like that, but like this, right? So let's redraw it like that. Let's, re let's draw the stock enone piece and then we'll fill in the groups we know to fill in, right? So we drew this, 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 and this, as, uh, sorry, these one, two, three, four, 
one, two, three, four. Attached to the double bond piece is a methyl group, and attached to the alpha carbon down here is two methyl groups like this. Right? And there we go. We've absolutely, actually, you know what? To change the problem, I'm going to erase one of these methyl groups. We're just going to keep one methyl group. And there you go. So really, just kind of have the way you are used to seeing your Robinson pieces, then if someone doesn't give you them in a nice way, draw it how you know it. And then once you've done that, you can kind of uh, erase the icky way somebody gave you those pieces. Big jerk balls. Okay, so let's do what we know to do. Remember, this is that, carb, that alpha carbon that doubles up. He has two chances to being someone's alpha carbon, so he becomes the enolate. He is going to attack the fourth carbon in that enone, right? Actually, I'll asterisk him. That's what we've been doing. So, draw my line. That's the Michael addition aspect. Remember, then we end up making our enolate the other way to form a six-membered ring and do that aldol condensation. That's this alpha carbon right here. And remember, he's going to attack the other carbonyl right there because we would make a one, two, three, four, five, six-membered ring. So again, I'm going to draw one six-membered ring because we didn't start out with a six-membered ring. But remember, these two carbons that are these two carbons, we can fill in the rest of our pieces. So the top one has this going on with a carbonyl straight off of it. The bottom piece right here is, uh, just has one group coming off of it. Remember, count five carbons away from the carbonyl that does not get attacked. One, two, three, four, five. Okay? Oh wait, I'm going to dot this carbon that was the alpha carbon. I'm going to asterisk that carbon. Okay, now remember, the other carbonyl, a part of this 1,5 dicarbonyl, also did the aldol condensation. We should have a double bond right here. And that double bond should start three positions away from this carbonyl, one, two, three, because it was a part of the 1,3 dicarbonyl. All we have to do now is fill in our groups. So on the asterisk carbon, we had a methyl group. And then on that alpha carbon next to where the condensation occurred, we should have a methyl group. Okay, I want to do one more problem and we will then call it a day. So what if somebody was another, a bigger jerk ball and gave you some type of aldol reaction where, you know, instead of giving you the, the reactants, they give you the products. The product, sorry, I'm looking at my sheet. Okay, what if they gave you something like this? I did a very poor job of trying to highlight this on the worksheet in the notes section of, Rob of the Robinson annulation, but you just have to basically break up your pieces to then isolate your enone and then get your dicarbonyl and then you're good to go. Here's how I usually do it. So I find a carbonyl that is three positions, it, it's the one that's not in the enone, right? Here's our enone. Here's the, other di or here's the other carbonyl. The carbonyl that participated in the Michael addition. Here was my alpha carbon that helped me do that Michael addition. Once I find that, I usually draw a squiggly line. That was the breaking point. That was the first step of the reaction. The next place I draw a squiggly, I don't know why I dropped that marker, is at the double bond. Because remember, we started out with a 1,3 dicarbonyl but that, carbon, that one carbonyl disappeared in the aldol condensation. So, and the aldol condensation, the dicarbonyl was where the double bond starts coming from this direction. So once you've done that, I usually like to draw my dicarbonyl first. Right, I have a methyl group over here. I have a carbonyl up here, this guy. We've drawn these two. And if you count one, two, three away, that's your di that's, this is your dicarbonyl. Now we just need to draw our enone and we're in business. We're done. So you can see one, two, three, four. So I'm going to draw that kind of stock shape of my enone with the double bond going here because it has to be an enone, right? 
The double bond was here because that's where that carbon got attacked by the dicarbonyl's alpha carbon. And then you can see on the second carbon, we have a methyl group. Okay, so you can actually see how important relationships are in this unit, guys. I'm very comfortable with this stuff because I've really tried to do my best in it by internalizing those relationships. And I just know if you guys do it too, you guys will master this stuff. And surprisingly, it actually becomes second nature at some point. Okay, do the worksheet, look at the answers. If you don't get the answers right, try them again. Really try and figure out what your mistakes are and correct them. And I promise you, you guys will get good at this stuff. All right, I actually am going to add another video. It's going to be kind of like a summary synthesis practice video type thing. Um, just make sure you know the relationships. Tune into that last video, and we're done with alpha carbons.